Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I have a, another drone to show you today. Uh, I have the uh, MJX uh, MG1 uh, that the folks at MJX were kind enough to send me. Uh, I don't know if they're still using the Bugs name. It's just called MG1, so I suppose it's the Bugs MG1. Uh, but this is an interesting little drone, so let's pull it out of the box and take a look at it. Okay, so MJX, uh, in their typical style, gives us a nice little carrying case. I always appreciate that. Uh, it really, you know, I've said it repeatedly, it helps you keep everything uh, organized. And you do have a nice double zipper uh, on, the, uh, on the case. And there it is. There's the uh, MJX MG1 or the Bugs MG1, I suppose you could call it as well. Uh, they sent me the two battery version here. Uh, let's get started with the drone itself. So, uh, so here's the little drone. Uh, it's, uh, it's a brushless motor GPS uh, drone and uh, that has optical flow as well. Let's uh, open up the legs here so you can see it in all its glory. Let me hold it by the legs here so you can see it a little better. Uh, anyway, brushless motors here. And uh, yeah, on the bottom here, you're going to see, uh, uh, well, that's a little pinhole camera, so that's optical flow. Now, those two little guys right there, uh, I, I didn't say it in the specs, but they sure look like time of flight sensors. So uh, I don't know for certain, but... Uh, Let's go ahead and, uh, and peel this off and we can, uh, we can take that gimbal cover off. Okay, I had to look at how to remove this. It looks like you got to kind of just press down there and pull that out. And, and there's the gimbal. So, you know what? They are right. So it does have a roll axis uh, on the gimbal and, uh, and then up and down as well on the camera, uh, the pitch axis. So it is a two-axis gimbal, so that's good to know. What it doesn't have is the uh, the yaw axis, but that's okay. And they're also advertising electronic image stabilization, so that's great. Uh, in fact, if you look on this leg right here, uh, it says uh, EIS, 120 degree field of view, uh, one over three lands, f 2.4, 2.9 millimeters. So. Uh, yeah, so that will, I, I'm very encouraged here now, knowing that that is a full two-axis gimbal. And you'll be able to uh, also adjust that camera up and down too, which is really important. Uh, and then uh, SD card slot right here. I have, as you'll see, I've already inserted an SD card in there. And they're asking for a class 10 SD card. And then it's a rear loader on the battery, so let me pull the battery out and I didn't look at the specs on the battery uh, so it looks like 2950 milliamp battery they're saying a uh, flight time of 25 minutes so uh, you know as typical with virtually every drone manufacturer you're likely not to get 25 minutes but uh, you know uh, possibly if, if you get uh, 15 to 18 minutes, you'll probably be doing pretty good, which is plenty, by the way. Uh, and then uh, range, they're saying 600 meter control range and I think 400 meter FPV. So there again, I'm going to tell you it's probably more like 150 or 200 meters, which is plenty. Uh, on a drone like this, you're not looking to, uh, to fly long distances, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be more than enough, I would say. Uh, and then also, it does this little camera shoots in 4K video uh, and also uh, 1080 video, uh, and it also uh, takes uh, 4K pictures as well. So, uh, yeah, that's about it for the drone here. Let's uh, take a good look at the controller. So this is kind of a standard. Uh, uh, MJX controller that uh, we've seen many times before. Uh, pay attention to this uh, uh, switch on the side. Uh, it's GPS on or off. Uh, my what I would tell you is always leave GPS on. You know, maybe if you're shooting inside the house, you could turn it off. But for the most part, leave GPS on. 
This is the on off switch for the controller and uh, I guess I should also show you there's a couple of handles here on the bottom of the controller and they look like that might be where you would mount your phone but they are not. They're just handles to hang on to. Uh, this button right here is to unlock the motors when you're starting it up. You've got a good, uh, let me pull this off, you've got a nice uh, LCD screen here or excuse me, LED screen, not LCD. Uh, and in fact, let me uh, let me turn it on here real quick. Yeah, you can take a look at that. So there's the uh, there is the LED screen, uh, and uh, you know gives you uh, all, all the uh, telemetry that you're going to need. Uh, and then uh, this button right here is to take a picture, and I think you double press it uh, for video. And this is the return to home button over here. Uh, then you got high and low speed right here. Uh, and then this is to land and take off. In other words, when you're getting ready to take off, you would unlock the motors with this button. You would hit this button and, uh, and the drone will take off. Uh, and I can't remember which one of these scroll wheels is. Yeah, it's this one right here on, on the uh, right side of the, the uh, controller. This scroll wheel is for adjusting the camera up and down. This scroll wheel on, on the left side is just locked. It doesn't do anything. <clears throat> so let's unfold the antenna here. So what I'm going to show you about the antenna is this one on the right hand side is uh, has nothing in it. So it's just there for show. There is a wire going into the one on the left here. So that one is actually useful. Let me show you how you mount your mobile device. Yeah, you pull this out and uh, then uh, this lifts up. You gotta pull it all the way out. This lifts up and your mobile device goes right there and you can tip it down like this uh, for better viewing if you want. So uh, a couple of ways to move it there. Uh, so then it, I like the way it just uh, it goes clear down into the controller and gets out of the way. So that's kind of a handy little deal. So then in the top of the bag here uh, you get the uh, usual excellent uh, manual that uh, Bugs provides and I'm not going to take it out of the bag it's just it's an owner's manual but they always give you some Bugs decals but what I like is they give you a large manual that's easy to read and it's usually uh, in fact it's always uh, uh, very well written and easy to understand and again I'm not going to pull all this stuff out of the bag here but you get a uh, screwdriver for the props and a uh, uh, a USB-A to USB-C cable and some extra props so that kind of rounds out the kit uh, and again this one is the uh, double battery kit so I saw the uh, single battery version of this drone on uh, Banggood for about $229 again I've got the double battery version and I would recommend that that's going to cost you a little bit more, uh, uh, probably more like uh, around $250. So, so there's only one thing left to do. We need to get the uh, MJX MG1 uh, out in the field. And uh, yeah, let's get this bird in the air. Hey everybody, okay, we are out in the field with the uh, MJX MG1 uh, and I'm pretty excited about this little drone. Uh, and I need to correct something that I said earlier. Uh, I had some bad information on the frame rates here. This actually does shoot in 4K 30 frames per second. Uh, I was looking in the specifications in the manual. The, the specifications sheet that I found, out, found online evidently was incorrect. So it is 4K 30 frames per second. I think I said 16 frames per second in the introduction. So. I uh, want to correct that and hopefully I corrected it on screen. And I'm not seeing anything in the manual about any lower resolutions or frame rates. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll mess around with that here when we get the thing fired up and take a look. But I am, uh, I've got high hopes that we'll get some pretty good uh, quality video uh, out of this guy with this uh, two axis gim gimbal. That in combination with electronic image stabilization it looks like a pretty good package, so uh, let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Okay, the first thing that we need to do here, uh, and you do that on any MJX drone, is you need to uh, pair the controller uh, to the uh, drone itself. So uh, the first thing you do is, uh, while you're 
holding down the lock button, you turn the controller on, and that puts it in pairing mode, and you can tell that. You're not going to be able to see it, I don't think, but both of the little on the sides of the LED screen here, uh, the segmented lines there are strobing. So, uh, so now, now we need to turn on the uh, drone itself, and that's by holding the power button down for three seconds. And hopefully we'll get uh, connection here. I see that it quit strobing. Yeah, and so I'm going to need to try that again, I think. We must have, uh, something must have happened. So I'm going to turn the controller off, hold down that lock button again, turn it on, and it's in pairing mode. And I may have to turn on the drone again. Uh, that was kind of odd. Okay, I got it to take that time. I think uh, what I was doing wrong is you need to do that in pretty quick succession. So in other words, uh, once you uh, get put the controller in pairing, pairing mode, immediately uh, go over to the drone and, uh, and get it uh, turned on, and then it'll lock right up. And you can tell because both of those bars quit strobing and they're fully lit up, and I can see the... Uh, the battery uh, percentage uh, on the uh, uh, LED screen as well. So now we need to hook up the, uh, the drone to uh, uh, our uh, mobile device. So I'm going into Wi-Fi here on my mobile device and I'm going to look for the drone. And there you see it. It says Drone 4G. So click on that. There's no password needed. And it should connect. The landscapers are doing a lot of work here today, so I'm sorry for uh, all that noise. Uh, and anyway, okay, so now what we can do is we can fire up the app. So the app is the X-Drone app. So let's click on that. And we're going to say okay to everything about the local network, etc., etc. And, uh, and the drone is already asking for a compass calibration, so we'll do that. So that's going to be, uh, and I'll set the controller down. That's going to be uh, turning it uh, horizontally. And we should get a beep. I didn't hear anything, but we'll turn it vertically. And I didn't hear any beeps. We got a blinking green light on the back. That was not a successful calibration because I still have my, uh, my light blinking here. So uh, let's try that one more time. Okay, there we got it. Uh, evidently, I just didn't turn it uh, enough uh, because uh, I, I finally got the beeps on the controller and the little and on the uh, LCD screen or the LED screen, excuse me, the little blinking drone has gone away. Let's go ahead and uh, enter device and uh, allow while using app that wants to know our location. And look, we've got a good FPV feed already. Uh, let's go into the, uh, and it's in sport mode, and, and but well that's okay, we'll leave it in sport mode. Let's go into the uh, menu here and see what we can see. So uh, I'm going to, I could choose the British system or the metric system. I typically use metric, uh, and uh, beginner mode is off, and that's what we want. For our orbit, you can, that's where you, ha you have to preset when you go into the orbit mode. You have to preset it here, so we'll set it up. Well, we've got it at uh, 15 meters. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. See if I can get it down to 10. There's 10. Yeah, 10 meters. Uh, and then distance, uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not sure. We're going to set the return to home height up a little. Maybe you have to set the other distances first. We're going to set maximum distance and we're going to set maximum height and then return to home altitude here. Uh, we'll put it at 25 meters. That should be plenty for what we're doing. And that's everything there. And that is security and I don't see anything else in that menu so I think we're updating here yeah setting is okay so camera menu let's click on those three bars there we go and oh and you can set brightness and saturation that's good to know uh, we're gonna not do any effects 
we are going to leave ISO on auto. I don't see any place here where we can, uh, well, maybe let's try this button down here. Cache frame. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there it is. Video size. Okay. So this is good to know. So we can go 1080p 60 frames per second, which is awesome. But we're going to go 4K 30. Let's get the best video we can. And we may even try something else. And, uh, Let's go ahead and format the card. It's always a good idea to uh, let the drone format the, the uh, SD card how it likes. So we should be good to go here. Let's quit wasting battery. I'm going to start recording now. And it looks like the lights, the TF light is blinking, so it should be recording. So in order to take off on... Uh, all MGX drones, you hit this unlock button and that unlocks the props. And maybe, yeah, it doesn't like something. Let's do a short press, maybe a long press. There we go, a little bit longer of a press. And then the takeoff button on the back here, so we're going to click that. And there it is, in uh, typical. Uh, MJX fashion, we've got a nice uh, steady hover here. Let's, uh, oh boy, and really uh, the, the, uh, the controls, that yaw control, it's, as you saw, the drone turned around pretty quickly. And I'm parked right next to my truck, so I'm, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to fly it into my truck here, so I'm going to be a little extra careful. But let's, uh, let's bring it in here a little bit. Drop it down. See if we can bring it in. There we go. So there's the drone. I was holding my hand under the drone to see how, uh, see if that, uh, uh, the time of flight sensors or what looks like time of flight sensors on the bottom would uh, make the drone rise up, but I didn't see that. Uh, but there's definitely a little optical flow sensor under there. Let's rock it back and forth here, and you can see how that two-axis gimbal works. And I'm hearing a little kind of a whistling noise out of the drone, uh, so I don't know if that's normal or not, but I, I guess we'll take it on a flight here and find out. A uh, little breeze came up, and I'm watching the drone uh, drop just a little. That's probably the barometer. Okay, I'm going to drop the uh, gimbal down here just a little, maybe. There we go. I was turning it the wrong way. And we're going to do a, uh, a, a manual droney right now. So hang on. we got a car coming here. We're going to wait for that car to get out of the way. And uh, we're going to do... Uh, our manual drone, he reverse and up now, reverse and up. And there we are. And boy, oh boy, did the drone, the drone is moving around like, oh, it's toilet bowling like crazy. Okay, I'm not liking that. We're gonna bring it down. That's not a good sign. It was moving in circles, uncommanded circles, which usually that means that it needs a calibration. Let's see if it settles down here. And it is settling down. So I don't know what that was about, but that uh, was not something that you want to see. Uh, typically, you hope that uh, uh, you, get, you don't get uh, that kind of a movement with the drone, but, uh, but we did. So, uh, so let's, let's bring it back in here just a little bit. I kind of want to see what we got going. And I'm going to put it in low speed mode. It's in high speed mode right now. So I'm going to hold that button. Maybe you have to hold it. Yeah, that put it in low speed mode. So that should help us a little bit. And let's bring, the, let's bring it back to us. And the controls, I'm watching the drone, yeah, it's really uh, moving around. After I let off the controls, and it's going in a circle here again, 
we're going to bring and it's moving around up there we're going to bring the drone back in and uh, and see if i can land it here i am not liking what i'm seeing as far as boy i'll tell you what and i have uh it's just really uh it's re the controls are just so vague it's really tough for me to control here and in fact I'm going to move it over here on the other side of my, uh, well, maybe we can bring it down. It's kind of calming down here a little. Okay. It's, it's settled down a lot now, but let me tell you, it was moving around like crazy up there. Let me, uh, yeah, you can see it there right now moving over. Let me pick that camera back up. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna land it here, and we're gonna do another compass calibration. And you saw it bouncing as I landed it there. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording, and uh, and we'll do a quick calibration here. And I should be able to calibrate it. I believe it is both sticks down into the left to do the compass calibration but we are going to find out or maybe it's to the right i can't remember let's go down into the right first down into the right yeah and it put it in geomagnetic calibration okay let's go down into the left and see if we can get a uh, a gyro calibration and i'm not so not sure what's going on there uh, we're going to try this again. We got a good uh, calibration. The other thing I noticed is when I set the, the uh, controller down earlier, it folded up the antenna. This one is the only antenna that works, but we're going to pull that back out and, and give that a shot here. So uh, let's see if we can uh, take off again. Again, we're going to press the, uh, the lock button on the controller here. And that fires up the, uh, the motors. And let's do a manual takeoff. And that's looking pretty steady. And I'm going to start recording again. And uh, let's uh, let's head back out over the field here and see what we can see. Let's uh, see how this guy does. See if it's any steadier. So I just let off the throttle there. It's holding nice and steady up there. So that's much better. So maybe we just needed a uh, maybe we just needed a magnetic calibration here. There, I am going to uh, drop. Whoops, that's too much. It's pretty touchy on that uh, that gimbal setting. Uh, and you know, I kind of like what I see here in the uh, on the FPV feed. And again, we're in low speed mode. I'm heading out towards the uh, other corner of the park here. Let's grab some altitude. That's not going to hurt anything to get some altitude as we go. And you know, the drone looks okay now. I was, like I said, I was a little concerned before when I saw those circular movements. Yeah, so I got out there 170 feet and it's telling me TX no signal. So we're not even going to get out to the corner of the park. And I was kind of suspicious of that with this drone. They're saying 600 meters. Yeah, look, yeah, okay, I got a little control back here. So, uh, so we're going to keep it a lot closer in. This is going to be, I'm just telling you, this is going to be 150 meter. Yeah, you're just not going to get very far out with this drone. Uh, and I have, uh, yeah, please pay attention to the wind speed. Well, we don't have much wind. Looks like it's in uh, auto return here. So I'm looking at, yeah, I got the FPV feedback. So I am going to see if I can cancel that and I did I was able to cancel that auto return and uh, let's see if I can yaw the drone around yeah and again I'm now I'm only 68 meters away and I lost a little bit of signal so uh, let's bring it down and bring it in a little here bring it back to us yeah, we got some folks uh, running around here, so we're going to want to be a little, little more careful here. Let's drop that gimbal down just a little. 
so you can see what's going on. Bring the drone back to us a little bit here. Let me, uh, wow, the, the, I can tell you the controls are very, very sensitive on this guy. Uh, although, whatever issues I had with, as far as the drone moving around, uh, seems to seem to have abated, so that's a good thing. Let's see if we can uh, maybe do a little bit of a, a circle around the flag here. I'm going to try and do that. Again, uh, you know, not the most, yeah, see, I'm trying to control that yaw. Not the most precise uh, controls on this guy, although we're kind of doing it here. And we're not going to, we're going to wait for those people to get out of the way before we do much of anything else. Let's go ahead and back up the drone. Again, we're in tripod mode. Gives us a pretty good look at the flag there. Uh, and there, you know, I'm seeing it wander around a little as I, as I get off the uh, controls. I just, you know, I don't expect uh, a drone in this price category to have really precision, super precision controls, but boy, this guy's, uh, this one's kind of tough. They're making it really tough. Okay, let's see if we can go the other way. Let's try. It's just, you know, you either, the drone is either, uh, it's, it's either yawing really fast. I mean, it's hard to get, you know, those steady type movements with it. I'm watching the drone above me right now. I mean, we're doing okay, I guess. Okay, let me uh, pick up that gimbal, and boy, the, the, it, the gimbal wheel is the opposite direction of what I'm used to with uh, most other drones, so that's why I keep pushing it the wrong way. Uh, and let's see, battery power here, we're down to about three quarters on the uh, drone, according to this. I'm moving out over the field. And I'm looking on here if anywhere it tells us our speed. I don't see that anywhere. I don't see our horizontal speed. It just tells us our distance and our height. Yeah, we got the big, you're gonna hear a bunch of noise. We got the big blower going in front of me here. <laughs> oh, it never fails. Let's see how far out here we can get this guy. Uh, it's funny, guy just came out with a vacuum to vacuum up the leaves and now they're blowing, blowing what's left of them around. Yeah, so we're about 225 feet and we lost signal. So let's see if it comes back to us. It should put it into return to home. And now, oh, so we got signal back again. Let me see if I can yaw around here. No, I got no, uh, I've lost that control. So hopefully, I'm holding the controller up, the flat part of that antenna pointed towards it. And uh, the drone, uh, hopefully, will go into return to home. I'm looking for it. And not seeing it. Holding the controller backwards, maybe, see if I can get it to come back to us. Wonder if I can get a return to home signal to it. Let's try that. Press that button. Yeah, this is interesting. So the drone is not going into uh, into automated re return to home. So I'm gonna walk out there uh, into the field, see if I can get closer to the drone and, uh, and see if we can uh, maybe get it to take that command. Yeah, with no connection, it should be on its way back already, but it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, it's above us. It's coming down. It's landing. <laughs> it came back. We just don't have any FPV. I couldn't see it. So let's watch it come down here. 
and it's slowing down yeah you can see it on the GoPro now you drop that camera just a little pretty accurate GPS wise look it's right next to the controller uh, and it says GPS off although is what it says and, and, I, and I still have a, a frozen FPV screen so ah, that's not good <laughs> hopefully you get a, a signal back and let's see what I'd really like is to stop recording let's see if I can oh yeah th look there we got to we got FPV back so I'm gonna stop recording that way we know we don't uh, ruin a file we still should have plenty of battery so <laughs> Let's take off again and let's try some of the flight modes and see what we can do. So we know that uh, emergency return to home did finally kick into place there. So let's go ahead and hit the unlock again. And uh, I'm going to do an auto takeoff. And I'm going to pick the drone up and get it pointed towards us. Get, see if I can look down here. I, I, I keep pushing that scroll wheel. The, yeah, I don't know. I don't have any control over the... Uh, oh, there we go. Now I got some gimbal control. It's weird. I didn't have any gimbal control there for a second. Let me back it up just a little. I want to get some more height and back it up. I want to get it up above everything here. See if I can center it on me. And uh, yeah, we should be high enough for anything here. So I'm gonna end, I'm gonna click on those, I don't know, four little rectangles there that are above the return to home icon on the left side, and that's gonna put us in point of interest, uh, which should it'll do a, it'll do a circle. Now where it does the circle, if it starts where it's at or moves off, I I don't know. But I swipe, yeah, okay, so it's starting it right here. So that's perfect. That's what you want. And it's doing a, it's doing a nice little orbit here. And I think we, what did we set that at originally? We set it at, uh, and it's not exactly centered on me, but it's doing a good orbit. I think we set that on 10 meters or 15 meters. I don't remember which. Uh, but it's doing a perfect circle. So that's exactly what you want it to do. I like that. That is exactly right. So we're going to go back into that and click on it again and it'll stop. And the drone took that command perfectly. Uh, and then we do have a follow me mode, which uh, I'm going to see if I can get it to work here. And, it, it, and what it should be is uh, GPS follow me. And it should follow the GPS signal from my phone and the controller. So... Uh, Let's go into follow me and hopefully the, uh, I always get a little nervous on some of these drones because sometimes they kind of, it kind of freaks them out a little bit, but this guy seems to be doing okay. Yeah, it seems to be following me just fine. Yeah, it's working. It's working well. Huh? Nice job on that one, MJX. So if you're looking for a GPS follow me, now as you can see, what happens with GPS follow me, as opposed to like an active track where it's an optical, uh, a, uh, optical follow, is it doesn't keep you exactly in center of frame. So I'm kind of vaguely in the frame. I'm going to see if I can push the drone backwards, walking towards it, and I can. So yeah, that's perfect. That is exactly... Uh, exactly what you would hope it would do so uh, so those work perfect so I get nothing but good to say there so uh, let's get out of that and we're back into regular mode and uh, and we're still filming I believe that is uh, it, uh, this does not have any kind of a uh, well it may it may have a waypoint mode here let's click on the map yeah, so I can. I, I get on maps, I can do a, a waypoint. So let's do a, a small waypoint mission here. I'm going to click on that little finger at the bottom, and I'm going to do points. And I'm going to do, I'm going to just have it right, uh, hopefully do a square. Well, 
a square right around this parking lot that we're in and then have it move right back to the middle. So we are going to submit that to the drone and we're going to start it and it should now go to its first position and it is And now it's going to its second position. And now it's moving to its third position. And it's not messed around, trust me on this. Hopefully you guys are seeing that on video. It is, uh, it's hauling the mail. And that's working perfectly. You know, I'm, I'm watching the drone right above me and this map is, seems to be pretty darn accurate. So now it's gonna go to the, the last position here number five so yeah exactly right uh, so now the, the battery is low enough that it's reducing the range although what I'm going to tell you is this is not a drone you're going to fly much further than 100 meters anyway so uh, so that shouldn't be a problem okay so I want to go back to um, I'm clicking on my screen to get my FPV feedback and uh, and we'll bring it back down and, uh, and let's take it out there a ways. Let me just back it up here. I'm gonna grab some altitude, back it up. Let's see how well that 100 meter limit uh, works here. And again, I'm in low speed mode, uh, but the drone is, is moves along pretty quickly even in low speed mode. So uh, let me pick that camera back up, doggone it. And back it up here. Let's see if we can get to that 100 meter limit. It's moving farther than 100 meters, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So I'm moving it towards us. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and put it in return to home. And that's our, so it's telling me no signal at 117 meters. So let's try return to home on the controller. Yeah, and it took that command. And yeah, so I'm seeing it rise to its... Uh, uh, return to home height and uh, it's coming back to us so again we'll take another look at uh, and boy it doesn't mess around when, it's in when it finally gets into return to home let me tell you what the drone moves right along this is a powerful drone and let me uh, let me see if I can kick the camera down I don't think this yeah this camera doesn't go all the way 90 degrees down it will only go 70 degrees and yeah, it's going to be pretty darn close here. You're going to be able to see it on the uh, GoPro here. Let me get out my shadow out of the way. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty darn good. Uh, this drone does not have uh, precision landing. So, uh, you know, that's within a foot of the pad or so. That's pretty darn good. Uh, okay. Uh, I've got another battery, so not being one to waste a battery, I think we ought to uh, take off again and, and see what we can do with this guy. We got 15 satellites, enter device. Looks like we're ready to go here. Uh, let's start recording again and let's just fly around. What we didn't try out earlier was zoom. And then I want to be able to get some landings to be able to show them to you guys too. So. We're again, we're gonna start up those motors by pushing that to unlock button. And, uh, and then I'm gonna just do a manual takeoff here. And boy, that stick moving, it moved, uh, it didn't take it long. So, uh, so I'm gonna go up and out into the field here. And you know, the drone is, uh, is operating better. I had some issues there at first with it doing a circular motion and stuff. Uh, but, uh, but it, it really has calmed down here. So let me uh, drop that camera down, get it pointed towards us a little bit more. And <laughs> we're only 35 meters away and I had no signal there for a second. But we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try the zoom here. So I'm moving up, whoop, no, that's moving the camera. Okay, I thought that was zoom, so uh, maybe, do we have a zoom? I thought it said we had zoom on here. 
So I've got, a, I've got a little scroll, you can see on the right side of the screen, that little uh, scroll, uh, little, you got a blue and a green line and a little tab in the middle. Yeah, so that just moves the, uh, the gimbal, which, you know, that's kind of, honestly, I like that a little bit better than I do of uh, using the scroll wheel on the back of the, uh, of the camera here, or of the uh, controller. So uh, what I want to do here is uh, I, I really would like to, uh, to get uh, a little more range out of this guy. So I'm going to try and let me pick that camera up a little. There we go. I, I turned the wheel the right way that time. Let's just go out here in the field a little bit and see if we can get some decent uh, uh, range out of this guy. And I've got the... Uh, I've got the uh, in fact, let's pick up some altitude so that that's not an issue. Get the drone up there a ways. In fact, let's go even higher than that. Let's get it up about 50 meters high. And, and that way, uh, there should be no obstructions with the signal here and the drone. So I'm going to see, boy, I'm a little reticent here. We're 150 meters away. Yeah, and we lost signal immediately. So range-wise, you're just not going to get much. Okay, let me yaw it around again and bring it back to us. Get closer so that we can keep a good, solid, steady uh, control signal there. And I'm going to take a picture here. So we're going to stop recording. And this should be a 4K picture. So I'm just going to click on that white button on the uh, right-hand side of the screen. And it says it took a photo. So uh, let's start recording again. And bring it back to us here. Uh, you know, a little bit of uh, lag in the controls, I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to bring it back towards us. And you saw that, you know, we, we was popping in and out of uh, range there. So I'm going to hit full speed forward here. And again, this is in low speed mode and hopefully kind of give you an idea of how fast this drone is. It moves along pretty good. I mean, I'm watching it up there, up above me, and it's, uh, it's cruising right along. Okay, so let's turn around. Let's put it in high-speed mode again. So maybe I need to hold it down a little longer. Yep, sport mode now it says. That's high-speed mode. And let's see how the gimbal operates in high-speed mode, see if it kicks the gimbal around at all. Let's go, uh, let's go straight out this direction. And we're already 58 meters out, so we don't want to go too far. Or excuse me, 30-some meters out. Boy, I'll tell you what, the, that yaw control is, uh, is touchy. So we're 100 meters. I'm not going to go any further than that. And uh, let's turn around. And I'm seeing a little tilted horizon. Oh boy, so, so I had so much lag on the FPV screen there that I couldn't really control that, uh, that yaw. So I'm going to stop recording, and we're going to take a picture in this direction. And the reason I did that is because uh, I, I typically take pictures in both those directions on different drones. So I'm going to try recording again. Yeah, the device has not connected, so... Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, it will not, yeah, it won't start recording. Let's try to try take another picture. Yeah, it took a picture, but why won't it record? Okay, I'm going to bring it back to us here, see if I can, and get closer to us. And the drone is moving right along. Let me tell you, it's just about above me now. There we got to start recording again. And again, you know, I'm seeing a f uh, fairly crooked horizon there. Although, you know, I don't, I don't, a drone in this price category, I, I don't get too worried about that. Let's, uh, let's go forward speeds. I kind of want to give you an idea of how fast this drone will fly. So, you know, the only way to do that is to bring it down here a little ways. So let's drop some altitude here. I'm bringing it down. And, uh, Again, we're in, uh, we're in sport mode, and there's a fair amount of lag in these controls, so it's, it's really difficult for me to, uh, 
to really give you, uh, you know, I, I mean, you struggle to when you let go of the sticks and when to start on the sticks just because of the lag. Anyway, I'm full stick forward now, and this will give you an idea of speed. And I let off long before I got close to that tree just simply because I didn't, I, I, I didn't trust the lag and the controls. So we're going to do the same thing coming straight back towards us here. You can see me standing there. So full speed forward here, and we're in sport mode. And I'm going to let off now. Yeah, and you see the drone moving around there when I let off a little bit. Uh, and again, that's in sport mode. And I, I kind of wanted to give you an idea of, of uh, how the drone fly, uh, you know, of the speed. So that getting it lower helps you do that. So I'm going to go full reverse here. And boy, I'm watching the drone. It's moving right along. And yeah, I, I don't want to go, uh, boy, and you, we're, I'm seeing it move around there a little bit. Let's go forward. And let me raise altitude. Yeah, I'm watching the drone. It, I'm telling you, this thing's fast. Uh, but it, but what's nerve-wracking for me is the, uh, is the lag in the controls, and particularly in sport mode. Uh, it, you know, you, you, by the time you change a control interface, the drone is already way past where you thought it would be. So what I'm going to tell you is be careful. In sport mode, you're probably going to want to be. Uh, uh, pretty high off the ground. So let's go back into low speed mode. Maybe. Oh, it's telling me <laughs> at 124 meters, no signal. So I'm, I can see the drone. I'm staring right at the drone. Ah, there we got it back. So let's bring it back to us a little. Get a little closer. Maybe we can get a little better signal. And what, and what I wanted to do was bring it down and I want to put, yeah, and it's in tripod mode now, I see. So I want to give you an idea of the speed in tripod mode. So let's get it down. We're six meters off the ground here, and we're heading straight. Well, I was trying to head straight for that tree. Oh, and no signal. That's not good uh, at less than 100 meters away. You know, that's not anything you want to see. Uh, so again, okay, I'm full stick forward here again. So it's not too bad in that mode. And, uh, you know, kind of gives you an idea. Let me see if I can move it around here. Move it sideways around. And, you know, listen, we're 42 meters away. And I got to admit, we're not very high off the ground. But you saw that no signal again. And I'm watching the drone kind of drift around a little bit uh, in front of me there. So I think we've done about, uh, about all that we... Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe let's see. Let's see if I can just fly it in here to us uh, and go ar get around this sign and maybe get some low speed, low, uh, low altitude. Like I said, though, the thing is, I my problem is I do not trust the lag and the controls here to do this kind of uh, flying. You know, I'm trying to direct it towards me, and it isn't easy. You know, you, you, as soon as you hit that yaw button, it, either, it, it moves, you know, a little bit too quickly. Yeah, I'm just telling you, it's, it's tough. Moving sideways here. Uh, again, there's just a certain amount of lag in the control. So my recommendation is this is going to be a drone that you're going to want to fly uh, higher up. And turn it around here, bring it back to me. And even when I stop, I mean, it, it moves around. So you just don't have the kind of precision that you would hope to have. So I'm going to see if I can bring it back over the top of us again here. So that's a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to move it out in the field here. Let's uh, put her back in high speed mode. See if it took that. Nope, says, still says low speed. 
hold it down a little bit. There, we got the two beeps, that's high speed mode. And uh, let's go full forward here and fly it around here a little ways. And you guys are gonna see me, uh, you're gonna see some pretty quick yaws here and so forth, but that'll, that'll kind of tell us uh, how well that, uh, uh, that gimbal operates. I'm gonna get up higher, I'm telling you. You just, uh, what I don't want to do is run into something. Boy, look at that yaw when you're in sport mode. Holy cow, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so I think we've about seen about all we uh, can see on this guy. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and put it in uh, return to home, and I'm going to do it. Let's try it on the, uh, on the app this time. So I'm going to hit that return to home button on the app. Right below the, yep, confirm return to home. We're going to slide that slider. And let's see how long it takes it. Yeah, it's not messing around. I'm watching the drone. It's coming right back. Let me see if I can, uh, whoop, that's the wrong way on that scroll wheel. Trying to bring that gimbal down so you can see it here. And again, the gimbal on this guy only comes down to about 70 degrees. So we can't look straight down with it, but... Uh, but let's see, yeah, it's coming down. You know, one thing I'll say is uh, as far as GPS accuracy, uh, this guy does pretty good. Let's see if you're gonna be able to see that on the GoPro, and you are. And it's been consistent, you know? It's been uh, a foot or two off the pad uh, on every landing, so. And I should have picked that camera back up. Let me get everything shut down and we'll do a quick conclusion. Hey, I did a conclusion out in the field with the uh, MJX MG1 and I got home and I looked at the video that I got off of the drone. So I decided to come back and redo my conclusion. And that's a good thing. The video quality off of this little bargain drone, the MJX again, uh, model number MG-1, uh, was quite good. Uh, often off of drones in this price category, uh, e even if you get a stabilized picture, sometimes the video quality isn't that good. Uh, and then sometimes the other way around, you might have fairly reasonable looking video quality, but then it's either a not, sta not a stabilized uh, camera or it's just a gimbal that doesn't work very well. Uh, but in this case, this thing worked quite well and, and uh, kept the camera very stable. No jello, no jiggles, etc. I mean, a couple of times I saw a little bit of an unstable horizon. The drone also did quite well on its intelligent flight modes. In other words, automated flight modes. It has an orbit mode that it did uh, executed perfectly. Uh, and then we also did a GPS follow me test with it and it did that great. It was really good. In fact, I was even able to push the drone backwards as I was walking towards it. Uh, and then it has waypoints. I, I made a little waypoint mission and man, it just went for it and executed it perfectly. Uh, that's all the good stuff. Uh, and by the way, that camera is a big deal. Having good video on that camera is a huge deal on a drone in this price category. Uh, now, the downside is this. Controls, fair amount of lag in the controls. Tough to do really precision maneuvers with this drone. And in fact, if you're flying it, and I got nervous anytime I had it closer to the ground. I was, you know, it was moving around a little bit and there was enough lag in the controls. I just didn't feel real comfortable. Uh, and then the other uh, issue that I had, and this depends on how far you want to fly, but connectivity, they're claiming 600 meters control, and I think they said 400 meters FPV. I didn't get even close to that. If I was out much more than 100 meters, I started having control problems. In other words, losing connection with the drone. And in fact, I even had it a couple times uh, even closer than that. And certainly if you got out over 150 meters, you just are not, you're gonna lose connection with the drone, at least in the area I was in. I was in a public park that is probably uh, a, a 
fairly busy Wi-Fi environment, a lot of urban area, you know, a lot of houses and stuff around. So maybe some more Wi-Fi interference. If you took it out in the country, would you do better? You probably would. And in fact, I'll probably do that. I'll probably take this guy out someplace and just see what it will do connection-wise because the reason I'm willing to do that is because I was so impressed with the, uh, with the video quality at the price point that this drone is at. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I can say that I can recommend this guy, the MJX MG-1. I saw it on Banggood for like $229. Uh, perhaps you can get it at a little better price elsewhere. Uh, I don't know. We'll look around a little bit. So anyway, I guess that's about it. The uh, MJX MG-1, pretty decent little product. Uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, the MJX uh, MG-1. Not a bad little drone. All right, see you guys later.